Welcome back. SOLIDWORKS 2025 has been released recently, and I'm more convinced than ever before that this is the most user-friendly software for mechanical engineers and product designers. These videos are going to cover from the very basic and going into a more advanced uh, level. So since this is the first one, let me introduce to you the user interface. So in order to see the templates, we have many options, but let's start with the home welcome on the software. When you open the software, this is going to be, be shown. If it is not showing, you can click in this home here at the top. In here, we are going to find uh, recent documents and recent folders and all that. But right now, I need you to concentrate on the three types of templates that we have in this software. We have parts that is clearly for design separate parts, but it's not limited to that, but you will see later. Then we have assemblies that is many parts getting into uh, a, a, an environment where we get them all together and we can provide a relation, physical relation in between them so they can slide in between each other or having different types of relations. And then we have drawings and drawings is where we create our uh, 2D views and make annotations and create the documentation for the parts that we want. Okay, so let's go into the part environment. Let's do a couple of first moves in order to continue with this tutorial. So you can start feeling that you are getting into the software and getting stuff done. So right now, what I need you to do is to click on the front plane and click in this icon. This is going to create a sketch. The sketch is um, an environment on where you're going to create different types of elements like lines, circles, rectangles, um, slots, and you're going to relate all those elements in between them with uh, dimensions or relationships in between them. Okay, so let's go first to create a center rectangle here we will click at this uh, red um, indicator. So there is a point, that point is the origin of your environment, of your part. So this is the zero, 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 zero in X, Y, and Z. Okay, so let's click once and just drag the mouse. So as you can see, we have dimensions that are uh, constantly changing. The software is waiting for a click. It could be a, a left uh, click or it's waiting for your inputs on the dimension. So I will type um, 80 millimeters in here. Then I will click, or uh, sorry, hit the top key on my keyboard. And now I will type 150 and we click enter. Okay. I will click escape and this gave me a rectangle with those dimensions, but uh, it is not creating the dimensions themselves that are going to constrain this. So there is a type that I will show later how to activate that every time when you type a dimension, this dimension is going to stay. But for now, let's go to the smart dimension tool. That is the tool that we use for all the dimensions most of them um, are done with this tool. On the drawings environment, there are other tools, well, in here as well, but generally we use to use Smart Dimension. Okay, so there are something important to mention that uh, every time when we have a sketch, if we do not add dimensions or relations, in between the elements, our lines are going to stay in blue color. And the ones that are in black is because they are fully constrained. That means that from the region, at least, or from a grounded point, 
they cannot move anymore. Okay, so they are fully defined in the 2D space that on where we are creating our sketch. That is currently the front plane as we selected the front plane. So this line, for example, is free to move. And uh, if I create here a circle, it's going to be the same thing. It is going to be in color blue because it is not ground to anything and it can also change in diameter. So there are many ways to ground this, of course, create, creating dimensions with the smart dimension tool, but you can also click the elements in between them by holding the control key on your keyboard and then you release the control. So once again, you hit the control key, keep it on hold, select one element, select the second element and then release the control. And you're going to have a set of suggested uh, tools that you probably are going to use from that selection. So the one that I want to show you is for example, the tangent one. So you have also the relations here at the left and, and this is totally fine if I pick here on tangent or I can click, or sorry, hit again the control tap on my keyboard and the options are going to come back so I can again use them. So it's shown in here, they are now tangent. If I select one of them, I will see the green indicator for tangent in here. And I can, if I need to delete this, I can just right click on the tangent and then hit delete. And I have them again um, with no relation in between them. Okay, so let's delete these elements. Probably you're going to just have a rectangle at this point. So we are on the sketch environment. And the way how we know that we are in the sketch environment is because we can see, uh, sorry, oh, it got disappeared. Okay, that's fine. Let me see if it comes back. I was about to make a, yeah, there we go. Was about to make an annotation in here. Let's see, uh, it has been hidden again. Okay, so let's see again, yeah. So here is what you see and you can know that you are on and the sketch environment is basically you have these two indicators. One is for exit the sketch environment. That is what we want to do. And this X, if you click on the X, you're going to lose all the changes that you did on the sketch. So let's click in the blue icon and let's now um, go to the features tab here at the top and then click on extrude. Select one of the elements of this sketch. And now we can drag this arrow or provide a dimension in here. And then click this check. Okay, now we have something. Now let's come back to the user interface because now we can talk about graphic area. We have comments, we have already seen the sketch uh, tools, but let's talk more specifically about them. All right, so here at the top, you're going to have a zone of uh, ribbons or let's say tabs, and they are going to provide us with different types of tools. If you have a fresh new installation, you probably are going to have more than these tabs, and that's totally fine. We can add and remove those tabs from here by right clicking on any of them, going to tabs, and there you have different options, different tools. For now, I will leave the ones that I have that are basically features and the sketches. That's fine. Okay, so of course you have a variety of different tools and stuff that we will see in the next videos. So. At the left, we have the model tree that is basically the history of our part. SOLIDWORKS is a parametric software. So it has, uh, usually there is 
uh, features that are related with the sketches. So this is a sketch and this sketch is under this uh, or related with this feature because we have uh, used it with that feature. We can share the sketches for use them with other features in the future. But for now, let's keep in mind that you're going to have a model tree that uh, from where you can uh, call the, the comments for modify and you can inspect them, etc. later. Okay, then we have the graphic area that is basically the zone in here. This zone is graphic area. So this graphic area uh, is where our model lives. And uh, in order to rotate the model, as I have been doing along this tutorial, is by leaving the click on the scroll. You click the scroll and hold it, and you move the mouse. So you can have this rotation. You can also um, hold the control key and then again, the click at the mouse, at the scroll, and you can pan your model. There are another method for have more precise positioning, like on orthogonal positioning. So it is by clicking, uh, or sorry, by hitting the space bar. So you're going to have this cube. And as long as you move in this cube, you start to have previews of what is the result from clicking on that cube or that section of the cube, for example. So here I have the front and uh, I can click it. And now we have an orthogonal uh, view of this. Another way to call this comment is by clicking here at the top at the view orientation. So it's exactly the same. Uh, there are some tools that are going to appear in here that you can just click because those are exactly the same views as the standard ones, right? So top, front, bottom, right, left. And you can see that when we click on the spacebar, we have those tools as well in here. So there are many ways how to get in there. Uh, by scrolling the scroll on your mouse, you of course are going to make a zoom in, zoom out, uh, and then uh, the other thing is that you can use the arrows on your uh, keyboard for have precise uh, rotations like that. Okay, very good. So we have already talked about how the user interface looks. In assemblies, it is exactly the same thing, but with different tools because assemblies use different tools. Okay, so let's add some fillets. Uh, so let's click on the fillet command. I will click one of them and then I will position, be positioned over these two options. Those options are going to be different for different types of geometries. But in this case, for example, SolidWorks is helping me to select all the edges in this part. So everything is going to be round and uh, continuous, let's say. <laughs> okay, so that was pretty easy. And since these videos are pretending to not be very far, probably uh, you will like to see uh, this other video shown in here.